Well, let me thank you for carrying on. I'm uh, Joe is 90 and I'm pushing 80. And the other things I, I need to kind of tell these stories. That's why I'm glad you gave me this opportunity. I want to um, thank you. I want to thank you and I want to thank you for a life that has made all our lives better. Ambassador Andrew Young, we love you. Thank you so much. Passing the torch from one generation to the next. We keep it real with America's number one civil rights leader, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Keeping it real, keeping it real. I'm your host, Reverend Al Sharpton, and we are back. One eight seven seven five three two five seven nine seven is interesting in uh, headquarters in Maryland. They played that tape of Andrew Young when he was on this show, I guess, six seven years ago, talking about Dr. King and talking about encouraging us to continue carrying on and uh, passing the torch as we just got. Uh, finish speaking about with Mary Pat Hector, the generation behind us. And I think that, uh, you know, history is based on continuity. If there's nothing ahead of you you're connected to and nothing behind you connected to you and what you do, you may be operating under an illusion rather than really making a difference. Uh, if you read history, it goes in continuity from one era to the next, building on the era before it, good and bad. And I think that uh, a lot of us want to be so different that we do not make a difference. And I think we've got to be our own style, our own creative ways. But we also need to be in line with a progression of where our people need to go. Where do we go from here? Some people say, well, Reverend Al, you following a student of Dr. King, I'm a Malcolm person. Well, then do that. But I hear people talk about Martin and Malcolm and not doing what either one of them told you to do. Not a part of either one of their traditions and movements. So question is not what you call yourself. It's what you do with yourself. I heard some of the young people telling me a couple years ago in Ferguson, I'm with the Ella Baker model. What do that? Ella Baker got stuff done. I don't have a debate with anybody that comes out of a different school of thought. What I have a problem with is those that A, don't think, and those that don't act on the thoughts that they learn and master. Here at National Action Networks Convention, let's deal with a plan and bring your ideas to the table. Go to www.nationalactionnetwork.net. Let's go to Cliff in Connecticut on Sirius XM 126. Cliff? I called. I was kind of hurt yesterday with the responses coming from some of our white brothers and sisters, you know, in terms of not respecting and appreciating Dr. King. And you know, I had comments like he deserved what he got and, and that he you know, if he didn't stay in this place. And these are Democrats now. And that's the problem I'm having. These are white Democrats, Mr. Sharpton. And so my point is, is how can we try to get along and embrace the concept of unity and love when we're not getting it back? It's not being reciprocated to us. You know, and again, we're talking about political parties. Just to, just to sound up what you're saying, what do we do about this Democratic Party? Do you understand where the Republicans are going? But even as this upcoming election comes up, and, I, and I'll be at your campaign and I'm, I'll be at your headquarters, but what do we do in terms of the Democratic Party not endorsing a African American candidate, Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, or Cory Booker? You know, we're not getting that. Well, I think I think it's a great question. Yeah, I, I think that uh, what we've got to do is we must use the primary seasons to challenge some of these parties. 
and take over the parties or do something on, on our own. Uh, the Democratic Party didn't embrace Barack Obama. A lot of people forget Hillary Clinton had the support of the established Democratic Party in a way. But we rallied around Barack Obama and he won the primaries and became the Democratic nominee. So I think that you're right. You can't unite with people that are opposed to you. You unite with people that agree and believe in what we're about. And you get enough of those. And you take the parties. You take the positions. Because you can organize more than they can. What I was always taught is you've got to be able to outthink and outwork your opponents. You can't just sit back and say, they're not with me. Fine. If they've got seven with them, you get ten with you. And let's go to the mat. And that's how you organize. Let's go to Atlanta, Georgia, WAOK 1380 AM to Bishop Perry. Bishop Perry, you're keeping it real with us. Yeah, how you doing, Reverend? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, thank you for taking this call. Um, I appreciate everything that you're saying. Uh, it's, it's definitely on point. And it goes with, you know, it, the wisdom that carries the process is what's important. You know, um, we have a lot of separation, which, you know, it, it, it's not operating in a unified manner, which most of the movement was based upon. But I think we slowly getting there. Um, to where we can streamline a process somehow systematically with some sophistication, you know, to ensure some greater results than what we've been able to see. And of course, pushing, you know, great legislation, you know, to, you know, protect us and, you know, keep us in safeguards from being brutalized either by the police or by the justice system, you know. So, uh, but where do we go from here? I think that we have to look at the wisdom of what was carried in the and doing the civil rights movement, which was simply being unified, operating under one accord to, to create the greatest impact, you know, and as, as much as we see right now, it's sort of taking place on its own with the social injustice of police brutality. The youth are starting to mobilize themselves, you know, through social media, and they're getting results. So, you know, it's, it's a connection that as older people, uh, you know, in our generation, you know, we need to create that digital bridge with these guys and give them yeah. wisdom, you know, to move along with the process uh, to create the greatest impact to get the greatest results. Absolutely. I agree with that, Bishop. Thank you for your call. Buck in Detroit on XM, Series XM 126. Buck? Hey, Sharpie. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How you doing? Hey, I'm very good, man. Pleasure to see you again, man. It's uh, a couple of times out of college to talk with you. I got a, a real issue, man, that uh, happened yesterday. As I was listening to the Karen, she had the uh, Democratic chairman on online, and uh, she asked him two times to tell us how we can hold the politicians accountable. And he totally skirted her questions both times, which was a total insult to me and all blacks that vote Democrat, because in other words, what he was telling her was, don't ask me how to hold us accountable, just go out there and vote for us. So now I said, I thought about it all night. I was pretty upset. But I said, you know what? I'm going to call you. I'm going to call all these shows on the Urban Network. I'm going to let y'all know something. Y'all should dedicate a segment of the all show to the voter condition and give it somebody that can tell us how to effectively hold these um, politicians accountable, as well as avenues that we can take so we can do research on the people that we vote for and know their voting history, know what they stand for, and most important, know how to hold them accountable. Now, I know they're not going to tell us how to hold them accountable. I'm about to put it the, the onus on you guys that we support through your radio stations. Let's go ahead and set a segment aside to get some votes. Well, I tell, you, I tell you, Buck, I agree with you. Thank you for your call. So the way you hold them accountable is what I just said. Run folk against them and vote against them. That's why they have primaries. So if you've got somebody running in your district for Congress or council or alderman or mayor, you say, I want these three things. I want these four things. you got to stand up. Or we're going to run a candidate against you. Or we're going to support another candidate that will support these three or four things. And they'll be the Democratic candidate. 
or the Republican candidate or the independent candidate. We don't sit down and put down what we want them to stand up for. Don't go to them. You don't go to a restaurant and say, okay, what y'all serve me. You go to the restaurant and say, this is what I want to order. And that's how, the, that's what we're going to do at the convention. This is what we're going to say to these politicians. This is what we want in terms of criminal justice, commutation, police, or community relations. This is what we want in terms of voting. This is what we want in terms of our pension funds and our community to invest with our businesses and our young people and not gentrify. This is what we want. If you are for that, then fine. We're not for you. We're for that, and you promise to bring us that. If you don't, then we need to find candidates against you because you get before you go to the general elections, there are the primaries, and the primaries give you the leverage of saying, I don't want this particular person. So, and if the Democrats are going to tell you to vote Democrats, that's their job. Our job is to say, yeah, but what Democrat? Standing for what? When we wanted to stop stop and frisk in New York, we supported the candidate in the primary that says, I'll stand up with y'all against stop and frisk. He marched with us. He won and he brought stop and frisk down over 97%. The other candidates I knew better. We wouldn't go with them because they wouldn't play. People are only accountable if they know they have something to lose. And politicians, their currency is votes. We have the votes. We need to use them right. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Keeping it real. Shop time. Right after this. <laughs> 